Okay then, fun time. So finally, we are here. We are. We have all of our masters. They've had all the pre-post processing work they need, and we're all still linear, which is nice. So to start with, we're going to be working. We're not going to touch the RGBs just yet. Let's bring up our luminance. Actually, let's move those out of the way. Right, what we're going to do now is a, we're going to, what the ideal workflow is, you have your luminance RGBs. You combine your RGB to create a single file, which is just the RGB data. And your luminance file is a separate file which will then be added to the RGB file after it's been processed separately. Because we can make changes in the luminance channel that we don't necessarily want to make changes or make in the RGB. Because the luminance contains a lot more of the detail, that's where we can uh, be a bit more aggressive with noise reduction and uh, histogram stretching and just to bring out some more detail. So, firstly, if we actually have a look at the noise in this image. Okay, if we scroll right in. Now it's actually, <laughs> it's actually not that bad, really. Um, I'm quite fortunate with my CCD. Uh, it, it does produce very low noise. Um, and especially dark current, um, which is always nice. DSLRs obviously produce a lot more. Um, I think general rule, I mean, it's with CCDs, they're very expensive. Um, the better the chip, the better the characteristics, so less noise. Um, this is a Attic 460EX, which is a Sony... Uh, 694 chip I think it is um, and it's renowned for being really good <coughs> for having virtually no dark noise some people don't even take darks with it at all um, I do just for thoroughness <laughs> okay so what we're going to do is we're going to run some noise reduction on this and to do that we're going to make a copy of this file so this is a duplicate, see, DBE clone. Now what we're going to do with this clone is we're going to make it non-linear. So we're going to take it out of its linear state and use it as a mask. So what we're going to do is bring up the screen transfer function and also histogram transformation tool okay this is very powerful this is uh, this is where you can do a lot of the level stretching here and what I do is set that to the image now if I turn off screen transfer function and reapply it here it's the same thing but you can see what it in screen transfer that when I click it it makes adjustments. Now because this is non-linear, this doesn't exist. This is, like I say, just this that's producing this image for us. So what we can do is we can create the set that we can duplicate, sorry, yeah, we can duplicate what the screen transfer function has done in the histogram transformation, but then make it permanent. So it becomes non-linear. So what we can do is we can grab the instance from here and we can apply it to here. So what we can see now is the target, what it is and the target of what it will be. So if I now apply the histogram transformation to this clone and click it, you see it goes white. Because what in effect I've done is I've done 
two lots of screen transfer function. So if I now disable the STF, that's what it looks like now permanently. We reset the graph. Okay, and there we go. So this is the histogram of the luminance. So there's actually a lot of data here and it's nicely spread, which is good. So from here we can adjust our black points. We can move our mid sliders. And it, I would never change the whites. I always leave them right out at the end. Um, just don't. Um, what we can do also with the histogram transformation is bring up a real time preview of the image. So this is this. And what I change if when I change things here, you can see if I move the midtone slider, if I, if I bring it up, you can see what it's doing to the image in real time. And you can see the top graph is where the histogram will be if I was to apply this change. So if we just reset, what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to bring in some of the blacks and I'm going to increase the midtones very slightly. So this is then what it will become, which is good. This is what we want. So if I turn off the preview, I drag the instance to the clone and there we go. You see the change in the histogram. So let's just minimize that. So if we were to go back, if we undo it, we can see the change in the histograms, redo the change, and that's good. So let's just minimize that too. And here's our clone, which has been now permanently stretched, so it's now non-linear, which is good because it makes for a great mask. The good thing with monochromatic cameras, you, to, you, you can actually just duplicate the file and use it as a clone itself. It, it work, just works very well. So, but it is best to use a non-linear clone as the mask and not a linear clone. So, okay, now we have this image. We're gonna make this the mask for this file. So we drag it underneath and it applies it. We can just minimize that because we're not gonna use it now. You can see the mask has been applied. Now, the rule, black conceals, white reveals, with a mask, obviously we don't want to affect anything in the image but the background for noise reduction. So we need to invert this mask like so. So it's the mask is now covering all the stars, all the good stuff, and it's leaving just background. So that's our star mask in place. And our next step, we use some noise reduction which is here, and we use a process called multi-scale linear transform. So we apply, and it brings up this. And this uses wavelets and layers to uh, apply noise reduction to masked or unmasked areas. Now what I'm going to do is just I'm going to set this up quickly. So you could be more aggressive with noise reduction in the lower levels, or sorry, the like layer one, layer two, and you get progressively less as you go up. We have four layers that we're going to do reduction in. So layer one, I'm going to keep the threshold at three. I'm going to bring the amount down to 50. Now that's using 50% of, of the original image and 50% of the noise reduction image. I can bump it to three iterations, so it will run it three times on that particular layer. For number two, we bring it down to two, same amount, 50%, but only two iterations now. 
for channel 3. We come down to 1. Same amount again. 50. Keep it 2 iterations. And then layer 4. It will be 0 0.5 or 0 0500. Same amount. 50. 1 iteration. Okay, now that is set up to run. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run it, drag the instance, and let it go. <coughs> and now we just wait. We'll wait for it to do its thing. You can see it's going through the layers individually. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, I have to say this work does work very well for noise reduction. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, if I sh unshow the mask, and then if we zoom in, let's just minimise that. So if we move into some background here, let's say. So this is after the change. If we undo it, you can see there. So that was the noise before. Note the stars. Redo the change. The mask has done its job. It's covered the stars great. Nothing really changed. But we lost all that noise in the background. So... starting to look pretty good okay so now our next step we can actually now take our luminance file in fact the mask we can uh, remove it altogether because we're not now going to use it again we're not for this particular part we can close that now this is still linear so we now need to take this to non-linear so the same as before if I turn it off, you see it's still in its linear state. Reapply the transfer. So we take the transfer settings and we apply it to the histogram. So this will be our end result once it's been taken. We take it off and then drag the histogram transformation to the image. We now reset the graph, and there we go. We now have a permanently stretched non-linear luminance frame. So we can close that. Now we can tweak the luminance a bit more here. So we can see there's quite a lot of room at the front of the back point. So what we can do is we bring up the real time preview again. And we can just start to oh, move this black across. Now if you look around the mice cursor here, shadows, when I start clipping data, so when I start going actually into the histogram, you can see the percentage start to rise. Now I'm still only clipping, even at that point, is 0.1942% of the total data. So it's minimal, it's nothing. So you can be quite aggressive here. I generally I don't really like to clip anything unless I don't, unless I need to, um, but in this case I will I will keep so it's nothing really. We can increase the midtones like so. Looks good. Apply it. Okay. And now we can close that. So there we go. That is now our non-linear luminance frame which has now had some noise reduction and also a bit of a stretch looks good I like it okay see lots of detail coming through now the extra hour of luminance really did make a difference um, especially around here in the outer lanes that's good now this image is actually, well it will be 
upside down so we can actually do this now we can change the geometry of the image we're going to rotate it 180 degrees and there we go now that's that's the image i will end up having with andromeda this way north i believe it is down to the right and yeah so one pretty good luminance file